right, back at it. Day two is Shriner Tree Care. Look at this fleet that they have. Just nuts. And they're all clean. So they have somebody come in once a week and they have another company that they hire once a week. They pull all the trucks out here and the, the company comes and pressure washes everything. Everything's spick and span. And then today I also, or yesterday I guess, so when I was at John's Custom Saws getting my limb reaper built, he was like, hey, leave your Screaming Eagle, the 261, leave it here because I got way better at porting these and I want to redo it. So I just got this back from him. He shipped it here. He actually shipped it to like a bank. <laughs> he sent it to 304 instead of 334. So I, we went to like this, it was like an investment firm or something after work yesterday and picked this up. So I'll be able to run this today. So it'll be really nice to get, get this baby back. All right, so here's the saw. It's cool to finally have it back. So he, he kept it because he also wanted to make a full wrap handle. So this is like one of the only 261s I know of with a full wrap handle. He had to like cut a bunch of stuff and the hydro dipping was wearing off. So he replaced the cover. So it looks a little different than it used to, but it's got the, you know, John's custom saws. I think he replaced like every part on the saw. It's a different muffler. It's like a brand new saw. So this will be fun to see how it runs. The other one ran great. And he said that he can make it even better. It'll be fun to try this out today. It's a 261R. This is a Ford 41 handle, I think. And he had to like cut my old handle and this one up. And he had to do a lot of stuff to make this work, I guess. It took him a while to figure it out, but it looks great. Okay, second day at Shriner Tree Care. This is a tulip poplar removal. My first tulip poplar I've ever done. I've done two types of poplar. I've done Lombardi's and black cottonwood, which is technically a poplar where I live. The cottonwoods look kind of similar to this, so it's a co-dominant. And I'm gonna go up this guy and uh, set some rigging. We're gonna be rigging it out. The, the chipper's over here. It's already really hot. I'm gonna climb in the morning and then that's Keith right there. He's gonna probably climb in the afternoon we'll probably take turns it's a pretty big tree and this is the the drag zone right here here's the chipper i just can't get over how clean their equipment is it's insane it's all so clean it's crazy but anyway so yeah we're in pennsylvania my first tulip poplar real similar to cottonwood i think obviously it's all rigging it's kind of tangled up in these trees right here there's a lot of landscaping underneath that's really nice that we want to preserve so i'm just gonna get geared up i've got my my saws ready they usually use rope lanyards not steel core i am going to use my steel core on that because it's easier to flip up the tree yeah here's my lanyard steel core and here are my saws i got both my john's custom saws with me i got my 20 inch limb <laughs> reaper and then my 20 inch 261 that i just got back i haven't ran this thing in like a year or more so so anyways i'm gonna get geared up and i'm gonna kill this poplar all right So you have two choices. Okay. This is our standard uh, lowering line that we use, True Blue. Okay. It has stretch, but it runs really well. This is stable braid. It's dynamic. It's static. We don't natural cross this ever because of the sheath, but it's a little shorter than this one. So I'd suggest taking this up because this is our longest rope, and then we can tie an extension on the rope if we have to. Like if we rig a piece off and it's too tall, okay, it shouldn't be. We can tie an extension down here for. For the porter app. That's interesting. So you don't natural crotch that because the sheet separates the sheath from the core. Yeah, the abrasion to it. Feel that versus this. That's interesting. Yeah, so just, you use this because this is a what 16 strand, yeah, I think, like and original, that's a double braid. Okay. Original standard climbing ropes that they found. It makes sense. But I like stable braid rigging because I don't like stretch. I don't. Just this is fan. stretchier. Yes. Okay. So whatever you take with this before you take it, if you take something big, we're really going to make sure that we all, the three of us, get it super tight on the porter wrap. Okay. Take as much slack out of it as you can. Interesting. Still be okay. Rim. This, if we did that, one guy could just take the slack out and you should be fine kind of thing. Okay, got it. Um, I like this for the rings and for rigging large leads. Like if we're going to do okay. a intricate rig that's going to go this way and go yeah. over there. I really like this. Crazy. You guys have to rig like everything <laughs> that you do. Uh, some crews. I'm the rigging crew. Scott's the yeah. rigging crew. These are my JK boots. You can get $20 off your boots. JKboots.com using the promo code TREASON. I've been climbing using the titanium Buckingham spurs, but I actually busted out my carbon fiber ones again because they're a lot lighter for traveling. And I forgot how much I like these things.
already hot, dude. <laughs> Yes, this is a tulip poplar. You can tell it's got these real distinct leaves. There aren't any other trees with a leaf like this. It looks almost flat up here. Really unique leaf. They just call them poplars. I call them tulip poplars because where I live, if you say poplar, people are thinking of a Lombardi poplar. So it's kind of regional. <laughs> What knot do you guys usually do? Company tells us the proper procedure is marl to a bowlin. So if the bowlin were to come off, the marl would hold it. I'm gonna do a cow hitch. <laughs> a cow hitch will work. Because I don't know how to tie what you just said. <laughs> I, it's, it's funny. What knot would you like? Okay, well, I'm gonna do exactly our, what I would do. A <laughs> running bowlin is usually the best. Okay, I'll do that next time. But we back it up by making like a half hitch below the running bowlin. Okay, now I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I, I could probably put your the explanation. I think I understand what you're saying. Well, this is a cow hitch. <laughs> cow hitch is fine because the cow hitch isn't going to come out. As long as it's tied correctly, we're good. All right, I'm ready when you are. All right, what side um, are you cutting it on? So I'm going to try to drop it this way. I'm going to kind of stand right here. Um, here, make, let me make one suggestion. So that, yeah, of course, that works. please do. If you can get the rope up higher to where okay. um, it's coming out, like the weight of the piece is coming out towards us, it will act as its own tagline. Of course, okay. And then I can try my moral thing. <laughs> you just have to tie a bowline at that point because it'll be mid-tie. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna use the weight of the piece. Right, right, okay. Help it to help it like go over. Yeah, so like how your 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 body is facing the trunk right now, if you make the notch on that piece out to your left hand and let it fall with the natural weight, it will come this way. Okay. A lot of suckers on this tree. It's usually a sign they're gonna die. Oh really? Yeah, they suck her out. They get a lot of life before they wanna go. So like a last uh -huh. like a Hail Mary, I guess. That's interesting. And then if you whirl around to the back side. Yep, yep, perfect. Yeah, so then that way the piece falling is out of your way. Right, yeah, more tips the better for me. I, I really don't rig as much as you guys do. So and you just give me just give me a good notch like somewhere in here. And I'm gonna take up on this. And the one last thing I wanna do is I wanna get your line out of the way for you. Okay. You see how like uh, you just kind of worked with whatever the weight, wherever the weight sent it. With poplar, that's kind of what we do. Makes sense, just because it's so brittle. Mm-hmm. I really wasn't expecting it to smell different, like the wood. That's really bizarre, because the wood actually cuts just like our cottonwood, but it smells different. I didn't rock you with that at all, did I? No, not at all. I didn't feel anything. Okay, cool. If you want to give us the lower half of that Y that you're going out to. The one on my left. Yeah, is that a sucker yeah. or is that like an actual limb? Dude, I can't even see the tip of it. I think it's like a stub. I think it goes up 15 feet. Okay, you have room to bomb that. I can't really see the tip of it though. It's like so suckery. You know what? If you can rig it, then that way, if it gets caught up, we'll be able to get it out. Yeah, I'd rather do that. Yeah, I, I feel like this one really might get hung up, th this big one. I, I don't know how you feel about it. So if it gets hung up, I can put a butt line on it and then we can pull it. That like, we'll get you safely out of that way. And then we can just put a butt line on it and 
and tag it out. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I'll do this sucker first. Yeah, this is a tall tree, man. And all the trees are the same height here too. Like that oak is really tall. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they haven't been touched by anything. So like they've been able, been able to be trees. Right, they're all like one third. That one's even taller. There's a, I think it's a poplar over there. It's even taller. Like every tree here is 120, 130. If you look behind you, is there a rigging point on the dead side that would be high enough where if like I tied, if we tied that lead that definitely going out over the other poplar, if we could swing it at all to your left? There's actually a pretty nice, like directly behind me, there's a crotch like basically a foot above my head. Uh-huh. We could set of something in. Okay, cool. Is that like worst case scenario? If it gets hung up, we can use that. Is that what you're thinking? Yep. It's kind of hard because I can't see through the other poplar to make a suggestion. It's hard to see, it's hard to see up this thing with all the suckers. It's hard to even see just ahead of you. Oh, I, got, I got one more question. See when I pull up on this, how much pull I have? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. When you make that cut, Give me as much weight with that as possible. So if like your lanyard say another foot back from that and you basically give me that whole thing that your left hand is on, and you make the notch looking right at me, like right above your lanyard, as it comes over, I'll be able to pull down on it and maybe lift it up a little. It's so light. Right, okay. So I'll make it really low facing you. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm good. Tell me where you want, you want a tagline, where do you want it? Yeah, let's do a tagline. I'll put it like right here and then I'll try to get the rigging line a little higher. Is that what you're thinking? Or I can also put the tagline above it because uh, what, what do you think? Okay, so we got two principles. Where your rigging point is, it's kind of short and fast. So there's not much we can do about that. What we could do is we could say, you know what? We're not, we're gonna hold up on that lead for now. And then we could put a block, we could do, do the rest of this. And then we could put a block over here on this dead guy yeah and then i can get the rope out that way and i can we can notch it where it comes into this hole or we can stay with where you're at and you get me the rope a little further out and as you make you make the notch on the top so it almost acts like a grcs where when we pull down it's actually going to close the opposite way so it's like the three of us can pull on it and we can lift it then with the tagline or your other option is like does the weight go out towards the basketball hoop Yes, that's where it goes out. Probably gonna catch in that, but that's why I was thinking if we had a tagline, we could just yard it out. So what I'm saying is if we forget that for now and the weight's going that way and our rigging point was further back on, on this thing, we would definitely be able to get it to come out of that poplar. Yeah, I think you're right. If we had the block over there. I'm not worried about it because I can go up. We can, we can do that later. Like there's so much tree to do. I'm... Well, what I would like to do because I'm already here is just have, just finish this thing but if I bust up the crap out of that tree, I feel like I'm gonna hit the tree either way, no matter where I set the rigging. What if we put a tagline on it where we're pulling it towards this poplar to the right? Over here? Yeah, so like if, if, if the three of us were pulling it. Might work. Pulling the top into here and you made your notch. But then I'm notching it kind of towards myself. And if it breaks and the rigging line goes on this side of the stub, then it's on my flip line. Okay, if we tag it out that way towards the ladder, how much room do you have? Because I can't see. It's gonna go right into that tree. I think no matter what I do. But if, if we put a tagline on that lead and me and the guys down here are pulling it into here and you make your notch so it goes with it, we can pull that this way. Like out of the, like pull it up and over? Possibly. I don't think it's gonna go this way. Okay. I think it just leans too hard and it's too tall. I think it's, no matter what I do, it's gonna go into this tree. The question is just getting it out of this tree. I don't think there's any way I can avoid it. Unless I go up and, uh, I mean, I could go higher and then I could cut more, but then I've got to deal with all the... No, I don't like that because then you're, you're tying points. You're running out of tying points. I, I say I tie it on and we just <laughs> put it in that tree and then yard it out. I think that's... Okay. 
we'll do it. I think it's the least bad option, kind of. I don't think that we have many good options with it because it just leans so hard and it's so long. Yeah, because it, 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 go, it goes out so far that, it, that a hinge is not going to do anything. Yeah, it's gonna I'm not going to be able to manipulate it anywhere. Yeah. I don't think. So, yeah, I'll just take the rigging line. Okay. Let's just uh, hope we don't get too bad of hangers in that tree. Do you want me to put the tag line on it now? Yes, please. Yeah, I think it's going to get hung up. Yeah, I don't see any way of doing it without putting it in that tree unless it got dangerous. You know, any safer way to do it, I should say. I think that's the safest way to do it. Yeah, I... I think so, because in the end, if it busts up the poplar, we just prune the poplar. I kind of want to just bomb this one. Just Yeah, as long as you go up a little bit so it's shorter for me. I just can't have it hit this oak over here, that's all. This thing's not straight either. It leans right towards that thing, man. I should put a rope on this. Where you're standing, it goes up, and then there's all that sucker growth, and then it kind of goes up, and then it goes out to the right. Uh, yeah. Is that to my left, your right? Yeah. Yeah. If, if you get the rope, you can take that whole lead off, Jacob, back at the crotch. Yeah, you think so? If you get the rope mid mid tied for me. So right maybe four feet out from your lanyard, if you have it tied there, it's gonna drop and then it's gonna kick back hard at the block. Oh, you're gonna rig it? This whole thing on that? Yeah. Because what I'll do what I'll do is I'll put a block on the bottom of the tree and we'll have two points. Even though it's like twice as big as this? Yes, because poplar is actually quite strong if you reinforce it. Okay. We have the whole stem working with. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm wishing is I wish I would have set the block on that one now and just rigged all of this to it. I don't know, dude. There's so, this is hard. There are so many options to set the block and it's like once you commit to a spot, it's hard to like change it out, you know? Yeah, well the other problem was there was so much suckers we couldn't really see. So like if, the, if you walked up to the tree like this, you'd just say, oh, I'm gonna set the block over there, right? Right, and then just like, cause all this would swing real easy to it, you know? You know what I'd like to do, if you're okay with it? I think I'd like to go back over there, set the block, and then just work this whole canopy out. And then we just have this awkward bit at the end and we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. If I start topping this stuff and then I've got it, cause I really like the drop zone that we're working with right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that. I know it's, it's a lot of moving and- The movement's all on like how much you wanna move. I don't care how we do it. Whatever you see, whatever way you wanna do it, it's fine. Yeah, it's, these trees are so hard to plan from the ground cause you get up here and it's like, huh, it looks a lot, it starts to look a lot different. And I would just feel better about swinging all that stuff right over to this stout guy over the court. This is not to be mean any type of way, but obviously you haven't seen poplars like this. So like what, what might be second nature for me isn't. And, and that, that's perfectly fine, man. It's absolutely true. You know what another thing is too that I'm realizing while I'm up here, like we, we'll have some cottonwoods and maples that require rigging, but usually they're not totally surrounded by other real sprawling trees. You know what I mean? So like I got to rig out a maple, but it's surrounded by firs. So I'm not really worried about the maple catching the fur so much. This has really big sprawly, huge scaffold limbs in it on every tree all around it. It's really a puzzle to pick it apart. I hope I'm not like slowing you guys down a bunch. No, dude. I mean, I could have been that person that just goes, all right, I got this. We're gonna do this, this, and this. And that's not really who I am, nor do I want to be. Yeah, no, you're really nice to work with. There's a lot of wood on it. So like, I know whatever you're doing right now, I'll make up for it when we do the wood. So sometimes the other thing we do when you said we have a bunch of trees around it, like one of the single line things I do is I would have looked, it doesn't present itself, but that poplar behind you, I would be like, okay, could I tie into that poplar? and then just redirect all around the tree I'm taking out. But sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes it works. Yeah, this tree's tricky. I look from the ground, I was like, oh, it looks just like our cottonwoods. No problem, but I'm up here and it's like, man, it's really long and everything goes sideways and it's surrounded by really mature trees with other big scaffold limbs. So like you look at everything and it's like, it's actually really tricky. Where to set the block, where to set the tie-in. There's really nothing, there really isn't much of a central tall, it'd be nice if there's a really tall central leader to rig and climb off of it. Everything goes out and away. These are so spindly. And I was telling Keith, it's like, yeah, we have, we do have some trees like this at our, where I live, but more often than not, they're not surrounded by other huge sprawling broadleaf scaffold limbs to catch everything, you know? This might be surrounded by maybe one or two big broad trees, but they'll probably be like fir and cedar. And it's a lot more angles over here. Every tree is like this. Every tree that they deal with, they have to lower everything out pretty much because everything is broad and there's nice stuff down there. And they've got other broad trees that they're all tangled up in, you know? It's kind of hard, this tree's in decline, you know, it's dying and we're basically picking it out 
It's surrounded by all these trees. Every tree here is 120, 130 feet tall. These are all of 130. Every tree around me. I think that one's even taller. Even that oak over there is probably 125 or so. I mean, th these are tall trees. Yeah, I'm just doing a lot of back and forth. Like, man, trying to figure out the best way to do it. You know what's real interesting though is like, I have worked with guys that come from the East Coast to Washington. They obviously like rigging stuff is easier for them. And so is like SRT and they're much more gear savvy, but then they struggle with like big trees, like flip lining up them and, you know, dealing with like the really long bars and the big wood and stuff. It's just like, it's just interesting how the styles are different depending on the trees are where you are, you know? Yes. I also think it, it, it matters like on like who you learn from. Yeah. But you can learn from a guy who's like a total savage over here and then he'll go a different part of the country and he'll be confused. Or like logging, I was logging last week and I've been cutting trees for like 12 years but never commercial logging. And I was like totally confused at what the process was and. Yeah, like what's the best management practice to do this efficiently? Yeah. Do we need to have this hickory out for you or no? It'd be nice to have the hickories out but I don't think it's like a deal breaker. Okay. <laughs> shooting okay ready yep charlie headache <laughs> That's okay? Yeah, there's not much you can do about it. It's a really long branch. Yeah, if that was tip tied, maybe it would have come over, but uh, I mean, those are two things we can prune off. That's not a big deal, dude. That actually gives us some more room, too. Yeah, that's why I did it. <laughs> Lombrubus. It's so weird because Lombardi poplar and black cottonwood smell exactly the same, and this one smells totally different. It's so bizarre. So this one, can you rig it on, on this side of the trunk? Could I give this rope back then? And could somebody swing it to me? Yeah, yeah, we'll swing on the other side. Cause this, that way we won't hit the hickory. I mean, I, I can swing stuff, it's just so far away. Honestly, now that I have this hickory out right here, if you're comfortable with it, I would shorten my drop zone. We can manipulate anything. Even if you rig it big and I held it, when we bring it down, the guys can cut stuff up. Yeah. There's two options for that. What I can do is I can either pull this line out and give you a bigger block, or I can give you this rope and we can have it running there to another two blocks and I'll just put an extension on the back end of this line so I can rig it. Can I just have uh, another block and rigging line for this side? Let's just do that and then we'll have one on each tree. All right, I'm ready when you are. All right, here we go. Can't even 
tell anything hit the oak. So would you be okay if I tied it like kind of in the middle and cut it at the crotch right there? This one? Yeah. Whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. I'll do that because I'm not tied into this one. So I feel better about experimenting. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're going to go big, baby. See the open sky next to the oak? Yeah. You're trying to walk it into that space and then let it go. Okay. That, that's, that's probably what I'm trying to explain. You'll be able to do to some success because of how big the wood is. Okay. It's crazy, about a month ago, I was doing this big spruce removal. It just natural crotch, just, I just had like one branch to lower, you know? So I just threw my line, my rigging line over it. Mm -hmm. It was right next to my climb line. It was just next to my rope. It wasn't even on top of my rope. And it just like totally melted the my rope like, is insane. I, I, had that, I, had, I made that mistake where I put my lanyard too close to the block and the block came over. Yeah, it's wild how hot that gets. I'm gonna cut my notch from over here. Yep, and then just come spin around the other side. With the notch, you wanna get it as close to the crotch as possible to give me the most butt weight. Okay, my notch. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of cut it here, and then when I get towards the back, I'm gonna kind of be like right here. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. That's kind of what I was thinking. Cause I, the, there's a chance the butt could shoot back, you know? Yeah. So, okay. Cool. I'm ready when you are. I'm ready, man. All right. East Coast rigging, baby. Yeah. Are you okay? Better than ever. Okay, cool. I, <laughs> I, I knew that was coming close to you. I didn't want to hit you hard. That was wild. That was a lot of fun. But you were good, right? Like I didn't get it too close? No, it was great. What else could you have done? It hit the trunk. I was on the opposite side of the trunk. It was great. I watched the branches like go by my ears on either side. It was like, cool, cool. It's like the perfect size of my torso. <laughs> you know? Should protect me. Dude, this bar is so sick. How many, how long is it? 20 inches. But it weighs as much as a 14, a regular 14. It's exact same weight. But it's, but it's like half the diameter. It's really, really skinny. Yeah, it's quarter pitch. So it takes tiny little nibbles of wood. So you can make a longer bar because you're taking tinier bites. I took it off and went back to 14. And then I, I was like, you know what? I put the 20 back on and like, this thing's sweet. I'll lower this big fat one down next. Wait, which one are we doing next? This one right here? So unfortunately, you're gonna have to take that one in half. Uh, you don't like it? <laughs> Only because it's so long, Yeah, it, yeah. it's gonna hit the other poplar. Okay, but you wanna rig it off this point right too, right? Yeah, but if you take it where that first sucker comes out and you make your notch going this way, uh, out towards the poplar to my left, like so you, so you clear that way, I can let it come swinging in. Okay, sounds like a plan. Oh, what the heck is that? A weird black and white beetle up here. Oh, it's a lanternfly, spotter lanternfly. Did it jump away from you? Ah, whoa, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a spotted whoa. lanternfly. That's your first experience with the spotted lanternfly. They suck. Spotted lanternfly? They're invasive? Yeah. Yeah, this bar looks like a gimmick. I kind of just put it on just to kind of see if the saw would pull it. <laughs> I actually really like it. It's awesome for trees like this where you're doing tiny cuts and ev every once in a while making a really big cut, you know? Yeah, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to try this bar out. And then I was like, okay, that was fun. I took it off and then I ended up putting it back on. It's kind of a pain when you got a bunch of little limbs, but stuff like this or for crane work, it's like really awesome. But uh, yeah, this is actually what I'm used to using. Those, uh, what are they, locusts or something? Cicadas? They sound weird. Wow, that wood's brittle. <laughs> it just popped as soon as I touched the back of it.
Party on. I got a weird banana bench. There we go. Alright. So I think I'm gonna move the block now. I'm through a small crotch and then I just have it, I go down and tie it to some beefier wood like eight feet lower. Yeah, it's like a basil tie, but it's up here. So it's just a little chunkier of wood, you know? Yeah, that way I'm not just on that little stuff up there, but I don't want it all the way to the ground. Cause then it's at like, well, <laughs> my rope's not long enough <laughs> actually to go all the way to the ground. But also if I go all the way to the ground, it's like, I have to avoid cutting it, you know? So we're just gonna lower a really small, it's pretty small. I'm gonna cut a notch. Let me think for a second. Oh, I just notched it right towards that tree. It wasn't looking behind me. I should have notched it over here. It's notched right towards that other poplar, but I should have notched it. used to having a bunch of big sprawling trees around me you know like I don't know maybe I just suck <laughs> it's funny I notice out here you guys want me to cut everything like big the bigger the better out there they the guys want to cut the smaller the better it seems like <laughs>
Okay, headache. Interesting. Okay. Nice job. Wow, <laughs> that was wobbly. Nice. Okay, I'm cutting a little notch. Awesome. Once you guys give me the go ahead, I'm just gonna chuck some rounds and then reset my block about eight feet below me. Same spot. One of the nice things about rings, which I see now, why you guys probably like them so much, is they're really light, easy to move around. If I can just push chunks over, I can get this done. If I have to negative rig it or something, then it might take longer. I don't know, I'll just keep, I can go a little longer. I'm gonna be pretty useless by the afternoon. <laughs> I was pretty useless yesterday. Are you ready? <laughs> my heart racing <laughs> you just feel so much energy in the tree you know okay headache It's technically not ANSI whatever, you know, pushing and cutting, but I actually feel safer cutting and pushing sometimes. It's like I can push it away from myself, you know? So you kind of bend the rules a little bit sometimes because it's more, it's more safe, you know? These blanket rules really don't work for tree work, you know? Let's actually give me my other saw because this one's probably almost out of gas and I want that one anyway. So I'm gonna actually lower this down. I'll take that 261. What happened was I was at John's house filming him build my Limb Reaper. You know, the one I just lowered down. And he had built me this saw a year or so earlier. He was like, hey, leave your 261 here because I'm way better at porting those now. I'd like to redo it. So I left it and I told him, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna be in Pennsylvania. I could really use that saw. So then he like finished it up and sent it. <laughs> I saw turn off.
Sweet. I'll come down and uh, we'll take a break then. Cool. So Keith is gonna go up and finish. We're taking turns. So I did that half. He's gonna do this half. They shot a line up there from the ground. So he's got a high tie and spot while he monkeys out. I mean, that's really long and leggy. So you're just gonna spike up this thing, but you've got that as a tie-in for yeah, positioning and stuff. Yeah, it just has, gives me some extra, some extra comfort. Yeah, they set it up fast. They just, they shot it up there with the big shot. And it's funny, it's from the ground. I was like, I might be able to squirrel higher on this. And now I'm looking at it and I'm like, do I really wanna? <laughs> that makes me feel good to hear. See, it looks different from the ground and in the tree, you know? Even from one tree, even like from one side of the tree, it looks different than the other side, you know? It's crazy. Yeah, I was feeling the same way, like, man, that's pretty little up there. <laughs> and it makes it worse that it leans, too. Yeah. Yes, it does. So what we're gonna do is this lead that goes out this way. Okay. I'm notching it towards the block, and there's a hole between these two poplars. When it goes, you let it run below me, and we should be good, and just try to Okay. Try to miss what you can miss and then because I'm not tied into it, I'm not worried about the loop like swinging around or anything. Is it tied on? Yep, it's all good. How much would you do? Like one wrap? I would do this about one and a half. One and a half, you think? I'm fine with two only because if do hold it and it hangs up, it's not, I'm not worried about it. And then you could just let it out because you have gloves on, you know, like you could let it out pretty fast if you had to. Okay. All right. <laughs> that didn't break anything big it's not going to hold a hinge basically just going to pop off cool So he's up there on that tall spindly deal. So he's got like three blocks in this thing. It's really tricky because if he takes it too big, it's just gonna lodge inside this other tree and then it's where we're worse off. So he, he's tied in that one. He shimmied way out there and it's just like redirecting a bunch of times, trying to redirect it straight down. And uh, yeah, this is a awkward deal he's doing. Crazy, so he's taking the pulse off so he can get the tagline even higher so we can try to pull it this way so it clears out of those trees. Nuts. So nuts, so he's making it even smaller at the very top with the pole saw, reducing weight. It's just grown right over the top of this tree. It's just, I'm so glad that we took turns and that he's, <laughs> man, that's scary. This one's tricky. He's having Justin run it to be extra careful because he's ran a lot more ropes than me. Man, that thing is so sprawled out. It's insane. through this hole where the bags were. Right? Up on that top lead, uh, yeah, I can let the butt end down. It'll probably come down and swing free. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> that thing is still long. I didn't run out of rope either.
How'd that feel? Is that, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go yeah, where you guys want it. Cool. Nice! I bet that feels nice having the brush out. That was awesome, man. Great job. I'm gonna give Keith my saw, see what he thinks. He's never ran square ground chain before. Let me warm it up for you. Alright, you're on. thing is loud <laughs> might be a little too loud I like put my muffs down and it got worse because of the comms <laughs> yeah that log is secure actually yeah Keith likes my saw he says it's got even more power than my 30 he says a 362 that's a 262 it's even small he's like it's smaller than my 36 and it's got more power it's only a 50 cc saw it's like barely a professional grade saw it's really small but man it's got really awesome power It's pretty hard ground. All right, he's coming down. I don't know which crew I'm gonna be with tomorrow. You, you never know, it's tree work. Where you, I don't know if I'm gonna be back tomorrow or not, but we're about done with this job here. Great job, man. Thank you. Yeah, nice job, guys. Nice All right, headed back to the hotel. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. You can support this channel at patreon.com slash treason. Uh, I do like weekly safety videos there if you're interested. Um, yeah, just thanks for watching. It was a lot of fun today. That was, uh, that was a tricky tree. Man, it's just hard. This this traveling around thing is just, it's hard to do. It would be so much easier to just stay in Washington and just do big fur removals all the time, you know, because I've done a million of them. It's so tricky trying to travel around to different places, different parts of the world, different trees with different people. I'm constantly, I'm always the new guy on the crew, I'm constantly out of my comfort zone. It's just hard, so I just appreciate you guys watching this. Um, you know, at the same time, it's it's so rewarding though. At the end of the day, I can be like, dude, I, I cut down, <laughs> I cut down a tulip poplar today in Pennsylvania. You know, how how wild is that? It's so worth it, but it's just it's just such a struggle. And then to go do trees that you've never done before with people you've never done before in a place you've never been, and then to try to film it as well, sticking the GoPro on people's heads, sticking it in their faces when you're filming. Anyways, that's all just to say. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I would appreciate it and I'll see you. I'll be back uh, still in Pennsylvania t tomorrow. I'm here for two more days. Uh, so I'll have two more YouTube videos after this in Pennsylvania with Shriner Tree Care. And thanks Shriner for having me out. All right, bye.